Thank you so much. And now we have a very special guest who needs no introduction, uh, who's going to be moderating our next session. Ma'am, Vani Kola, ma'am, if I can ask you to please join us on stage, the founder and MD of Kalari Capital, who will be speaking to a very dynamic and influential leader of our times. Vani, ma'am, I think you will do the introduction. And thank you so much for being a support to all of us today, including me. The influential leader of our times is the person I'm introducing, just so that wasn't quite clear, that wasn't reference to me. But I remember meeting this, you know, so that's why I'm starting. So, um, who am I introducing? <laughs> so, you know, um, I was at, I think maybe four, five years back, I was at some event, and the evening event, and I met this really vivacious, uh, energetic young woman, and... Uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, they felt a connection and just wanted to cheer her along. And I have the privilege of uh, talking today to Divya Gokulnath. I don't need to introduce her. She is uh, co-founder, very active on LinkedIn. <laughs> we'll talk about that on social media. We'll talk about that. And uh, Divya uh, is co-founder of Baiju's, uh, obviously, a company that's been in the news, one of the most successful tech companies coming out of India, and we'll talk about that. Who's talking about being influential? She has one million <laughs> followers. So, hey, Gidira. <laughs> so, we both discovered that we have a couple of common things, and uh, uh, including how uh, we were raised uh, in terms of language, which we'll talk about um, in a minute. Intlo andru baunnaro. Intlo andru baunnaro le da teli idhen adagle di padorko. Correct. So, <laughs> so I, by the way, grew up in Hyderabad, but my grandparents uh, were from a village in uh, Karnataka. So I was always raised with multiple languages at home, and you know, was just expected to read, write, learn many languages without complaining. Anyway, kids were not supposed to complain when I was growing up, but that's a different topic. So, uh, you have two kids, Divya. Yes. Two boys. Yes. And how old are they? One is eight and a half. One is one and a half. And I remember you were in the throes of everything that's happening at Baiju's, and then you were having this little one. And I think we actually had something going on with you when you were uh, a podcast, I think, we did with you when you were pregnant with the younger one, right? Just when you were due to deliver, I think. So what makes it possible for you to juggle? You know, this is the biggest thing that for most young women, and even Kirtiga this morning talked about it. What are your hacks? You know who else gets this, uh, asked this question a lot? Not your husband. Baiju. Yeah? Mm. How do you manage work and life? How they do say, you how do you manage Divya? That's what they ask. How do you manage children and work? <laughs> Just kidding. They never get asked that question. Exactly. <laughs> so, so how do you do it? Pre-COVID, post-COVID, during COVID, life has actually gone through a lot of different ways in which I've come to adapt to handling this. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's going to be a life I say it's easy. Uh, even now, when I was with you, I was checking on a lost vaccination record of my younger one, and he's, he has to take that vaccination today. So this, this keeps happening to us. But for me, uh, one thing that's worked is artificial boundaries. So I try to be in one place at one time completely. It's very difficult to do, but that's something that I've tried to do because both are very important. Nothing is more important than the other one, both family and the company, and now 50,000 families. Uh, are who are with us and trusting us as we all chug along, I should say fly along uh, in this journey. So that having the right environment, supportive environment, people around me, I stand on the shoulders of those who are picking, picking me up, right? So I'm not flying on my own or I'm not climbing up on my own. And uh, I think the journey up is very bumpy, but having this kind of support system makes it just a little bit more smoother. You know, when they talk about lean in, I was never really, really able to relate. You told me that mom took your son today for vaccination, right? And my mom stood in for me so many times. I lost mom last year. 
in November, she was 80. But um, if she didn't stand in for me so many times, I don't think I could have done what I did. So it is not just lean in. There are other people who hold us so we can lean in. Right, and especially here in my family, I'm very lucky that it's both men and women. So my father-in-law and my mother have both played an equal role in bringing up both my children. And uh, the men in my family have led by example that you can you can share the load and it's right to share the load and that's important because it it sets a precedence for the next generation and I always joke with you that there's no gender diversity only for me right I have two boys at home there is no gender diversity in at work I was able to ensure but not at home you know our home my husband says there's no gender diversity also because the we other have side. <laughs> two girls Two daughters, me, two dogs that are female, <laughs> so just him. So, you know, is used to it. But you know, Divya, we all aspire for success and fulfillment, but there is a dark side to that also. And handling that, nobody gives you a guidebook, a handbook, uh, you know, a masterclass necessarily on how to do it. So no matter what you do, you know, somebody is out there trying to take you down. And you are very active, you are very visible, and even recently, I know you don't read your comments, but I was reading the comments and I was like, gosh, this is mean. So how do you handle being visible out there and just the good and the bad that comes with it? You know, there's no correct answer to that, right? Uh, and it's, uh, there is never something is right or something is wrong. It's always an opinion. For me, it's about a lot, you listen, you hear everything, but you decide what you want to listen to. Now, you listen to people who care about you, who want to see you grow, who want the best for you. Now, if, because there is so much information around there, that there is a chance that there can be a lot of misinformation also. So for me, it's about being focused, uh, but also about when you take a decision, not looking back. It's, it's happened to me multiple times, so never regret uh, what you do. Now, it's not that I don't read. Of course, I read the comments, right? I, I do read the comments, but I also look at what I've done. I usually do it for, for example, the latest one. I did it for the 50,000 people who work with us uh, because there was clarity needed. And when clarity was needed, I felt this was the right way to do it. Now, there will be a lot of people who will say, look, what you did was not right. There will be a lot of people who will say, we stand by you. I was flooded by messages of people who said, today we feel proud to be part of a community where we have a courageous leader, someone who can stand up for us. So, I, like, I don't think there is anything right, there's anything wrong, it's, uh, it's just about how you view it. And it's always never the situation, right? It's your reaction to the situation. So, uh, for me, like I said, I, I just want to say that uh, I hear everything, but I choose uh, what I listen to. You know, I have a question which I've always wondered um, because I don't think I could have done it. You and your husband are founders of a very successful company. In fact, Srini and I were in the same engineering college, but I was very clear when we married, we have to lead very separate personal and professional lives. I can't deal with both being so integrated because I didn't think I could um, sort of carve an identity for myself. But you have done that, right? So how do you, when you co-found and something is really successful, how easy or hard is it to create an identity of your own and what was your journey to do that? First of all, I don't think we are successful. We have a very long way to go. We have lots more uh, to do and I think we're just getting started. Uh, secondly, in terms of, so this, like I said, we didn't plan to start or scale like this, right? So I'm Baiju student. So there was somebody who asked me, Baiju the co-founder or, uh, you know, Baiju, uh, the husband. I said, Baiju, the teacher. That was my response because that's my first relationship with him. There's a lot that I've learned from him along the journey. And uh, it's, it is that relationship which blossomed into, a, into uh, whatever we built, the passion we had to teach, to inspire, to create an impact. Along with uh, five more students, we came together and we built something out of passion. And that intersected with the need in society. And that's how we grew to where we are today. You asked me this question 10 years ago. Never in my dreams did I imagine that this will reach where it has reached today, but there is still so much to be done. Now, about the overlap, so I find it very, very difficult to disconnect between personal and professional life, and it will be wrong or a lie if I say that, you know, I can say 
full stop here and next sentence there. So it is, uh, it is, there is a lot of overlap, but if you enjoy what you do, there will be good times, there will be tough times, there will be bad times. But then when your eye is on the ultimate mission, which is well, you know where you're going. We are here for the decades to come, right? We are not serial entrepreneurs. We are, we've been doing this for the last 15 years. We'll do it for the next 30 years at least, till we can do it, right? So uh, that's why I, I, both of us enjoy, we enjoy doing everything together, we enjoy traveling together, we enjoy working together, and we love spending time with the kids and also working out together, so. What's your favorite workout together? Um, high intensity interval training. So who wins? <laughs> See, nowadays I'm winning because somehow I'm managing to keep th those 30 minutes aside for myself. The last six months have been very tough, so Baiju's not been able to do it with the usual rigor that he does. But I've somehow managed to carve that 30 minutes out for myself. So today I'm winning, but I'm sure he'll come back and then he'll start winning again. Great. You know, you talked about you started as a passion project and you didn't know where this was going to go. Obviously, you've been tremendously successful. You know, when you pause and say, what next? I know you said next 30 years I'm going to do that. But, what, you know, what now gives you meaning and what is it that would make you satisfied 10 years from now, let alone 30 years from now. So in education, uh, the impact is something which is generational, right? Like, uh, and in fact, especially with women, you educate a girl, you educate a generation. If you educate a girl, she'll ensure her children are educated. So the impact is massive. I'm lucky to be in a segment which creates so much impact. Uh, for me, I think we need to move towards an understanding of education that it's not about attendance, but about attention. Right? Today, what is compulsory is 85% attendance, say in a classroom. But what the world should move to in my, in my wish is 100% attention. Uh, where, where you know that the child is learning because they want to learn. Because learning is fun. Uh, they enjoy it. And that there are so many ways to make that happen. And I speak as a teacher for that. Because I've been teaching through the last 15 years of uh, my career. I've started as a teacher. I teach even today when I get time. And I've seen the tremendous impact the right kind of teacher and of course the parents can have on a child and help them become better learners and fall in love with learning. So for me, like I said, my, the future for me is when I see that every child that we touch is becoming a self-learner, an active learner, a learner not driven by the fear of exams but by the love for learning. So there are a lot of women out here uh, because they, in all of us want to live our best selves, our best lives, right? So any learnings, hacks, what do you want to share? So one thing is that, see, we, we are known to multitask as women, right? And that's supposed to be a strength, but that same strength can come back and hit us. So I believe that if, if there are 10 things that we want to do, it's better to pick up the top three things and give 100% to it then try and give 10% to 10 different things by trying to do everything at the same time. And the second thing is by giving yourself time. Now, it's very underrated. It can sound selfish in a world where, uh, you know, they believe women have to put family first. Yes, put family first. Yes, put work first. But put yourself somewhere in that list. Because if you are happier and you are healthier, because health is everything. We just saw that from uh, the lady who just yeah. spoke. That health, you have health on your side, you can achieve whatever you want. The only thing that can stop you is when you're not healthy, right? Everything else is in your control. So you, if you can spend that much time on yourself, taking care of yourself, you become, you're enabled to take care of everybody else around you. You know, from the time I have known you and whenever I see you, Divya, you have, I can do, I will do, and just a bounty of, confidence and that's your nature your conditioning your identity and Mukda talked about sort of the uh, earlier on the ups and downs of life a do you have uh, vulnerable moments and how do you overcome that because I haven't seen it at all <laughs> vulnerable moments will come to everyone I'm more emotional than vulnerable like I, I will I, I I'm very close to tears if my son sings the national anthem in school. Those are the kind of things which can stir me up and 
you know, make me cry. So I'm very patriotic, I'm very emotional. But I'm also very positive and, and for me, I see in everything, I always see the good. That's just somehow my nature. And teaching has given me the confidence. If, if you feel that I exude confidence, it's because of the teacher in me that has shaped me as a person. In fact, if you go to school and say, Divya, they will say, Divya Gokulnath, the introvert, the quietest girl in the class. Today, if you ask uh, my friends and the pe my colleagues, Divya, they will say the most talkative one among us. So I've evolved as a person, I've changed as a person because of uh, what I've learned along the way. So do you remember what, and, and I always look back to my own life and wonder how you know, life takes you in so many different paths, but do you remember what was your earliest career aspiration? What did you want to be? I wanted to be an astronaut and go to the moon, but who didn't want that? <laughs> well, you could still get there, I think, so that's not over and done with. And, but still, it's the moon or the Mars now? Maybe a little further. <laughs> so, um, and Divya, you know, you're very written about, so everybody knows sort of the usual things. What is it that we don't know about you that you would want us to know? There's no press here, and everybody is on an umbrata of, you know, what happens in this room stays in the room. No, no, I'm okay with, <laughs> I mean, there's, uh, so, you know, there is this joke, they're like, okay, your, your book has pages, uh, you know, there are pages missing or closed, and I say my life is an open book, you know, and it's, it's if, if I'm able to inspire people, especially young girls, to live their dream, by what I'm doing, then I'm, I'm very happy. If I'm able to learn from women like you every day, that's what makes me happy. So what you don't know about me, I'm a singer. Oh. Uh, well, then we need something. <laughs> Give us a line. Uh, Hindi or English? Hindi? Hindi? Hindi is good. Hindi is good for everybody? Okay. Caught me unaware, huh? that's why. I'm just thinking. I'm glad I did How do that. I so I get you? paid today as a moderator. So. Aap ki nazaron ne samjha, yar ke kabil mujhe, dil ki ye dhadkan theer ja. So, um, when do you get to uh, sing? I don't get time. I only sing to my little one now. So, we will do a mehvil, Kabi, you know, with the same CXXO group and, you know, and maybe even tonight, right? So, when we are doing dinner, we'll do, and Divya is back for dinner here, so we'll do that. Now, I had a bunch of people in my own team, first of all, give me questions I should ask you, so I wrote those down. It says time's up. Huh, I know, it says time's up. One minute, I think, uh, Varnika will give us. I'm scared of her questions. You know? No, no, these are not my questions. <laughs> these are questions that other people ask me to ask okay. you. <laughs> what makes you really angry? What makes me very ah. angry? I think this must be from your team only. They would have sent it to us. Nothing so. <laughs> makes me angry. Nothing makes me angry. I'm I don't think they agree. <laughs> No, you should ask Shobha sitting there, ask her whether I've ever got to like... Shobha to hohi kahegi na? If, I, if I'm under stress, she will know first. And I'm telling you, you know, for me, life is in the middle. Like, there, there are no extremes. I, I feel very, very happy, but I've never felt very, very angry. What is there to be angry about? I get angry quite a bit, so I can't answer that, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and, and Shobha, I've known for many years, first with Mukesh and then with you, so... Ask Shobha her is, na, huh? I can't ask Shobha, or I'll ask her, but later. So, um, your stress busters, singing we know, what else? Workout we know, HIT, what else? Children, picking them up mm. in my arms. 
Yeah, mine are 28 and 23. So there's a phase, I warn you, you go through. You said, are they mine? So that happens too. But it gets better. After they turn 20, it gets better. But there's a period where you know nothing, right? They know scared. everything. You're they know me. everything. So next one is, uh, what do you love most about yourself? Not my questions. Maybe the fact that when someone, like people, they generally try to put me under stress, but I can laugh it off. You know, they think they're stressing me, but that I can laugh and give an answer. I think I like that I'm able to handle that. Which you are doing right now, to a tricky question. <laughs> uh, your leadership style, one word about your leadership style. To empower, to, to lead by example. Last question was, what are you working on to improve in yourself? So I think I can be a better version of myself every single day. Every aspect. I'm learning every single day. That's the motto of me personally, professionally, everywhere. So I learn from my children, I learn from my family, my parents, my husband, my parents, like my in-laws, everyone. I even learn from things around me, my surroundings. So for me, it's about a continuous learning exercise. So I, I, everything I can improve, frankly. I, I'm sure I can be more confident, I can speak better, I can impact more students, I can uh, help more women, I can learn more from women like you. So I can do everything better tomorrow. Thank you, Divya. Loved it. And uh, so. that wonderful conversation. So I laughed and I cried during that conversation because hearing about kids singing the national anthem gets me going as well. So thank you so much for that, Divya. And thank you so much, Vani, ma'am. That was. Uh, definitely the fees are in the bank already for the, uh, such a wonderful moderating session. Uh, thank you so much for that and now it's time to